Hey, this is Susan Fouché with Voices for Learning. Thanks so much for watching this video where I answer this question that I get all the time, which is, can anyone be an audiobook narrator? Well, the short answer to this question is yes, but, and so I'm going to elaborate on that big old but, in this video. Before I get into this though, in the description of this video, there is a very, very, very important Facebook group that you need to join if you are in any way, shape, or form considering doing any kind of audiobook narrating. And that Facebook group is called Audio Rescue. Uh, it's actually called Isotope RX Audio Rescue and Repair. It is a wonderful resource for new, intermediate, advanced, dinosaurs, anybody who's in voiceover needs to be in this Facebook group because there's so much about the technology uh, component of voice acting that is huge. So check that out, join that Facebook group before you do anything else and let's get into this video. Here we go. Okay, so you're probably actually looking in the description right now for the five things that you'll need to do to purchase to be an audiobook narrator for the beginning tools of the trade. And you can read those, I'm sure, but before I get into kind of an explanation of these things, I want to say this one thing. To be an audiobook narrator, you need to, number one, be a good reader, and you need to enjoy reading. You need to enjoy reading books. So if you're thinking back to your life and you're thinking, when was the last time I actually read a book? <laughs> I don't know. It's been a couple of years. This may not be for you. You do need to be a good reader. You do need to enjoy reading. So if you are one of these people that says, I don't like to read books, this is not for you. I promise. Um, you're going to have so many stumbling blocks in the beginning that it's going to be hard to overcome that, you know, component of not being a fluent and fluid reader. So just want to throw that out there. If you are a fluid reader and you're a fluent reader, in other words, like when you read out loud, things just flow. It just sounds really good. Then keep going, keep going. So the number one thing that you'll need is a quiet space. That can be, you know, a closet, like what I'm in right now. This is just my walk-in closet that I converted into a studio space. Eight years ago, it started with clothes everywhere and a Christmas tree and stuff like that. And just uh, about a year after I started, I just went ahead and converted the whole thing. Um, in the description, there's, you know, links to uh, acoustic panels and pads and things like that on Amazon. You can be creative though. It doesn't have to be, you know, spend a lot of money when you're first getting started. It can just be clothes. It can be blankets, pillows, whatever, but you will need a quiet space to block out any kind of like lawnmower, airplane, train, car, siren, whatever that's coming in from the outside. And, um, You'll also want to be able to like block out, you know, dishwasher, washing machine kind of noises as well. Um, air conditioning for me, what that means, because my studio space is not 100% soundproof. What that means is that I just have to keep the HVAC system off while I am recording, which works out fine because my kids, my husband, they're gone during the day and I can, this, this place stays pretty warm in the winter, it gets kind of hot in the summertime, but I can deal with it. So number two, you'll need a computer. You can use a laptop. That's what I started off with. But if you have a PC laptop, they do have a fan in it. So you're going to have to find some way to quiet that fan. Um, for me, I do use a PC. I use a desktop and my desktop is actually on the other side of this wall. So I broke a hole through the wall and all my cords are, like go from my monitor to my computer, you know, my mouse, everything like that goes through a hole in the wall. If you have a Mac, since they don't have a fan, you're, you're fine. And some people will actually have a studio booth where they just record. And then outside of their booth is where they do their editing. That's where their like their workstation is. 
for me, it's my workstation and my booth are the same thing. And when I upgrade my, like when we move in a couple months, I'm going to keep it the same way because I like being able to just have a workstation and a booth in the same space. So that's what I prefer. You're also going to need a microphone. Now, the microphone that I have, you don't need to run out and get that when you're first starting out. Um, this is actually my third microphone, and I kind of am considering maybe upgrading again and getting a more expensive, you know, more bells and whistles on it. But I don't know. This worked pretty well for me. When I first started off, I had a $99 microphone, and, you know, I got jobs. I got paid with it. I do recommend, you know, you upgrading from a $99 microphone to something better as soon as you possibly can. You'll also need headphones. The headphones that I first started off with were just piece of crap headphones that were just laying around. So I did upgrade though to much nicer headphones with the nicer padding because they're always on my head uh, to keep me comfortable. And you know, you might find like me that if you talk all day long, you're going to probably get a little bit of TMJ. And so sometimes like the headphones need to be extra wide. So they're not hitting that little like bone joint right there. And the fifth thing that you'll need to get is recording software. Now I have talked about audacity a million gazillion times. It is free open source downloadable software for recording. However, I do want to throw this in right now, right here you don't want to stay on audacity. You want to move to something better. And in the description, I've got a El Cheapo recording software called Studio One Artist. Studio One is the software that I use. However, I use the professional grade, which is like the $500 version. The artist version is like, I think $100, but a lot of times it goes on sale. If you will join that Facebook group that I talked about in the beginning, the um, Isotope RX Audio Rescue and Repair, they announce uh, sales for Studio One all the time. Join these Facebook groups. They are gold. And that way you can, you know, quickly snatch it up, purchase it when it comes on sale. Also in the description, I have another piece of software that is a absolute 100%. I have to have it. And that's called Isotope RX. Isotope RX is a software that takes your audio and it removes things that sound bad. So it masters it and makes it sound better. It will remove mouth noises, clicks that will drive you nuts, and it will make your sound be so much better. And that's called Isotope RX. The Elements version is pretty cheap too. I think it's like 40 bucks. I use the professional grade because I use more features and I have to have more features in it at this point. But when you're first starting, you don't have to get the super awesome, amazing uh, versions of it. So um, be sure and check those out. And of course, you know, University of YouTube is free. You learn how to use the software by watching YouTube. That's how I did. And if you are still wanting to be an audiobook narrator, oh my gosh, good for you. And you're just raring to go and ready to do this. That's awesome. I love my job. I've narrated over a hundred books and I have, it's morphed into something I never thought it would be. So, um, in the description also, there is a course for ACX, which shows you how to set up your profile and it's very, very useful. Um, it'll show you how to actually like, kind of stand out, make money, things like that, which is always very important. But thanks for watching to the end. Best of luck to you. Reach out. Let me know how I can help. And I cannot wait to see you next time and hear all about your adventures in audiobook narration world. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.